everybody. Welcome back to Running Gun. I'm JT. We are here in Lightroom today, and I'm going to show you how I created this urban moody look. And I really dig the way it turned out. I really enjoy how versatile this look is. You can see here I can use it on these sunny days. I can use it on these nighttime street photos like this dude on the bike I took in Manhattan. All sorts of different looks. You can see here there's some long exposures and it turned out really well, I think. I used it on cloudy days. I used it on sunny days in all sorts of lighting conditions. I even tried it on some portraits and I think it looks really great. So let's go ahead and let's recreate this look in Adobe Lightroom. So I have a photo here I shot in Manhattan. I don't exactly remember the street we were on. We were pretty close to Times Square and I really was digging the way this red door looked and really the way this strip of light was kind of hitting this door frame. So I had my buddy Huey stand right there in that little strip of light and I think this Urban Moody preset looked really good on this photo. So I'm going to start up here with the profile and I'm going to change that to Adobe Vivid just gives it a little more punch and a little more contrast. And before I ever start applying any sort of edit or look, I make sure the image is properly white balanced. So we can go in here, we can white balance from this white object right here. And that looks okay, but I'm actually gonna go in and I'm gonna manually make this image a little bit warmer because it was sunset and it did kind of have a warm golden glow to it. And I think that looks pretty good right there. So let's go ahead and let's play with toning this image. I'm going to go down to our exposure. And as you can see from our histogram, this image is about a stop or two underexposed. That's because I was trying to make sure these highlights here from this little burst of sun or a little reflection of sun wasn't overexposed. So I'm going to turn up the exposure just a touch so the image looks like it's properly exposed. We're gonna come back to this step a little bit later. But again, one of the awesome things about this look is you can use it on a bunch of different environments, a bunch of different settings, and most of that will be controlled right here with our exposure. So again, we will come back to that. For now, let's turn up our contrast quite a bit. I usually go between 50 and 60. Let's start out with 50, we can always bump that up later and I'm going to turn down our highlights almost all the way somewhere between negative 80 and negative 100 is good and then turn up our shadows just a bit I think about 30 looks good so right around there there's 30 what we're going to do next is turn our whites all the way down to negative 100 we don't want any highlights clipping and we can either leave our blacks alone or turn them down ever so slightly. I think negative 15 is about good right there. And to start getting this gritty urban city look, I'm going to turn up our texture next. Anywhere between 20 and 30 looks good. I'm also gonna turn up our clarity somewhere between 40 and 50. I think that's good for now. Again, these present settings, you can edit those to taste but I want it to look kind of grungy and gritty, and I want you to be able to see this texture in the photo. So we're also gonna turn up our dehaze slider just a touch. I think 30 looks good, and we're starting to get some nice contrast in this image, and I think it's starting to look pretty good without overdoing any of the clarity or texture yet. So what we're gonna do next is slide down here to our tone curve, and we're gonna apply that moody look that everybody likes so much. So the first thing I'm gonna start with is bringing down the upper right point right here. And if your points aren't showing up, you can hit this little box in the lower right and that will create the points on your tone curve. So we're gonna bring our highlights down a bit. And again, this is all just estimating and kind of eyeballing it depending on what your image looks like. We're also gonna bring up this lower left point, our shadows. I'll lift those shadows a bit, that looks good. And then we're gonna make these highlights pop just a touch by making another point and dragging it up. And then bring our shadows down a touch by making another point and dragging our shadows up. And once again, just eyeball it. It's all to taste based on your image. 
I can always come back in here when I'm done and kind of play around with my shadows and highlights, but the key is to make sure your shadows are nice and lifted. You do want to lose some of that detail up there and you want to make sure your highlights are not clipping. So we'll bring our highlights down. So that is good for the tone curve. You can see we're starting to get that moody look. Let's start to play with our colors right now. So I'm going to go to our HSL or Hue, Saturation, and Luminance tab. And in this Saturation tab, there's actually two ways I can play with our Saturation. I can move our sliders up and down, or I can use this Targeted Adjustment tool. And since there's not a huge variety of hues in this particular image, I'm actually going to go and just play with the sliders. And I'm going to turn the Saturation of almost everything down. But when I get to the yellow and the orange, I'm only going to turn those down slightly. I'm going to turn the reds down a bit and then kind of play with the oranges and the yellows a bit. I don't want to lose those, but I do really want to lose some of these greens, aquas, and blues. So that looks pretty good. I'm also going to play with our luminance. I'm going to bring our reds up or down, depending on how contrasty the reds are in the image. In this particular image, I'm going to pump our reds up a little bit, bring our oranges down a touch, bring those yellows down a touch. And if you have any bright oranges and yellows, they tend to overexpose pretty easily. So bring those guys down along with some of our other hues. So next we're going to edit our luminance values. And one thing we're really going to want to pay attention to is our reds and our oranges. Sometimes I like to bring up the reds a bit. You can see what's happening over here near our subject with those light rays. We're going to bring up the brightness of our reds and oranges and yellows tend to overexpose. So sometimes I'm going to bring those down, but this is another setting that you're going to play with to taste. I'll leave most of these other ones alone. Now let's go over to our hue tab. Again, I'm going to hit this targeted adjustment tool and I'm going to play with some of our hues. Let's make these reds nice and deep, really make those pop and take any yellows we have, move those a little bit more towards the orange, make our oranges a little more red. And again, I can tweak to taste with the sliders, but that looks pretty good so far. Now I'm going to go back to our basic tones tab. I'm going to scroll down to our vibrance and saturation. I'm going to turn up our vibrance quite a bit. 30 looks about good. And I'm going to turn down our saturation to about negative 20 or negative 30. And that looks pretty good so far. And when we feel like our image is looking nice and moody and desaturated, let's go down here and play with our split toning. So what we're going to want to do in the split toning tab is add some bluish greens to the highlights and add just a touch of saturation. And then we're going to go down to our shadows. And I find this is a good spot to either add some blues or some reds to your shadows. So in this case, I'm going to add a little bit of red to our shadows. We have some nice red hues right here. That looks pretty good. But if you did want to add some blues somewhere around 240 ish, that looks good as well. Again, this one is up to you. I want to add some red hues, but I think that looks pretty good. So we're good with our split toning tab. Remember when I said we could go back to our basic tab and play around with our exposure and contrast based on the image. This is where I'm going to go in and I'm going to tweak our exposure based on the individual photo. I'm also going to go in, add a touch more contrast, really give it that gritty look, and then play with some of our shadows and our highlights. This is where you get to make some of those individual edits depending on what your photo looks like, what the environment was, what the weather was like, because every photo is a little bit different and you have to make minor tone tweaks to the individual image. But let's take a look at what we started with. Kind of a boring, dull photo. And here is that urban, gritty, moody look. So again, the thing I love about this look is how versatile and adjustable it is. If you want it a little bit darker, you can go darker. If you want it a little bit lighter, you can always go lighter or find that balance in between and just make those individual tweaks based on your image. Maybe 
you want to have a little bit more clarity and punch to your image, maybe a little less saturation. But that is how you create my urban moody look. Super simple, but super versatile. And again, you can play around with different types of day, different types of lighting. In this particular example, I did go to my split toning and I made my shadows kind of that bluish versus making them red. But I think either one looks pretty darn good. It looks nice and gritty. It really has that New York vibe. I even played with some out of focus photos to kind of play with the color palette and just kind of mess around with colors. But again, I'm super happy with the way this turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, be sure to subscribe for more of my editing tutorials and of course my photography tips, tricks, and hacks videos. So that's all for this video. I will see you guys next weekend. And until next time, get out and go shoot.